Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I have to say I'm very, very uh, excited and honored to uh, come to London and attend such a wonderful conference. Uh, and today, the topic I want to share is a confinement model for concrete field circular tubes. Uh, my presentation covers the four uh, main parts. First, I will briefly introduce the background of this research work. Then I will present some uh, study results on the stress analysis of the steel tubes of the, uh, for the uh, concrete field tubes. Uh, third, I will discuss the equivalent confining stresses. Last, I would like to give some concluding remarks. This study is focused on the concrete field tubes, uh, where the axial loads are applied to the concrete cores directly, while the encasing steel tubes provide confinement to the concrete cores. As shown in this figure, the steel tube is deliberately made slightly shorter than the concrete core to avoid carrying direct axial loads. And in practice, the steel tube is generally disconnected at the beam to column joints. Uh, thus, to hence uh, the stiffness and the bending stress of this kind of column. The concrete core always needs to be reinforced by steel bars or steel sheaves, as shown in these two figures. This kind of composition uh, construction possesses many advantages. First, I think there's no local buckling of the steel tube, and the stress of the thin walled high stress steel tube can be fully utilized. Another advantage is the excellent seismic the column performed due to the effective confinement, uh, even when high stress concrete is used. The third advantage is good fair resistance performance. That is because uh, the low carrying steels, uh, like steel bars or steel sheaves, are embedded in the concrete and protected by the concrete. The last important advantage is the ease for construction. On one hand, the steel tube can be used as a formwork for concrete pouring during the construction. And on the other hand, due to the disconnection of the steel tube, the construction of the beam to column joints uh, is simplified, especially when connected with RC beams. In recent years, due to the superior uh, structure behavior, uh, the concrete field tubes have been used in construction for nearly um, 20 projects in China, uh, including high-rise uh, high buildings and last span structures. Uh, and they have gained good uh, economical benefits. The investigations on the basic uh, structure behavior of concrete field tubes can date back to uh, 1967. Uh, Professor Gardner et al. Uh, conducted a test uh, to uh, investigate uh, the influence of unloading condition uh, on the uh, traditional CFSTs. And uh, their study included the special CFSTs where the only uh, concrete core is loaded. Uh, in their study, uh, the end loading condition has little influence on the axial resistance of CFST columns due to large friction between the concrete cores and the steel tubes. To further enhance the confinement, uh, Orito et al. Uh, focused on the uh, concrete field steel tubes uh, with greases, uh, that is the unbonding uh, steel tube concrete. Uh, this kind of uh, column uh, have a better confinement and higher uh, axial resistance than traditional CFST, but uh, with uh, reduced axial stiffnesses. Uh, in 1985, uh, Tommy firstly investigated the uh, behavior of reinforced concrete columns with uh, circular shear links. Uh, in their study, the steel tubes are considered as an extreme situation of using uh, traditional hoops uh, of shear links with a zero spacing, and they are fully uh, utilized for confinement. Uh, due to the special uh, unloading condition, 
uh, the load carrying and the confinement mechanism of this kind of column uh, are de still deserving to be investigated. I show in this figure as the column ends, uh, slip between the steel tube and the concrete may uh, occur along the column head. Uh, well, uh, but uh, with the uh, uh, accumulation of, of the frictional stress, uh, the slip may be overcome, and uh, the steel tube uh, as mid-head region uh, may uh, deform accordingly with the concrete core. Uh, therefore, uh, the tube stresses are vary in each section along the column head. Uh, here I list uh, three key issues to be investigated. Uh, the distribution of the tube stresses along the column head. The influence of uh, longitudinal uh, tube stress on the axial resistance of the uh, concrete cores. And the determination of the effective uh, confining stresses. And all these issues are related to the confinement model uh, in this uh, study. Uh, to uh, investigate the confinement, we first focus on the uh, stress state of uh, the steel tube. Uh, as shown in this figure, uh, for simplification, uh, the steel tube is theoretically uh, divided into uh, two regions. Uh, one is the slip region at the column ends, and the other one is the non-slip region at the uh, mid-head. Uh, in the slip region, uh, frictional stress accumulates along the column head, uh, while in the non-slip region, uh, the uh, friction stress is assumed to be gone. And, the, the, uh, and based on the uh, division, we can get two uh, characteristic sections, uh, end section and uh, boundary section. Uh, for the end sections, there, are, uh, there is no longitudinal string, and the transfer string of the steel tube uh, is equal to that of the concrete. Uh, where in the boundary section, both the uh, longitudinal and uh, the transfer strings are equal to those of the concrete. Based on the uh, string relationship, we developed uh, a calculating program uh, for predicting uh, the stress development uh, in the end section and the boundary section. Here is a comparison uh, between the predicted results and the test results. As shown in these two figures, uh, they are in a good agreement. Uh, besides, uh, for the end sections, uh, the steel tubes uh, yield transversely at the peak loads. Well, for the boundary section, uh, the transverse stress uh, increase at a later sta loading, sta late loading stage, and they cannot uh, reach the yield strength. Next, let's discuss the uh, stress dis uh, let, let's discuss the distribution of tube stresses along the column height at peak loads. Uh, in this analysis, uh, two uh, basic assumptions uh, were adopted. Uh, first, uh, the friction uh, in the steel to concrete uh, interface is uh, proportional to the confining and pressure. Uh, second, uh, the steel tube is uh, assumed to be under the plan plastic uh, stress condition. Uh, both of these uh, assumptions were verified by the test results. And based on this, uh, we can uh, take up a, a macro unit of the steel tube uh, to, uh, in, in the slip region to analyze the tube stresses. Uh, in, in the longitudinal direction, we can establish uh, the equilibrium equation and then combine it with the full masses uh, yield criteria. And based on this, uh, we can derive the parametric uh, equations uh, for predicting the uh, tube stresses as the peak loads. Uh, here is, uh, here is this, this figure shows the, uh, tube, uh, the relationship between the tube stress and the wearable HC. Uh, HC can be calculated by a mu 2D and multiply H, where mu is a frictional factor between the steel tube and the concrete. A D is the diameter of the steel tube. And H is uh, the distance between the study section uh, to the end section. As shown in this figure, uh, the longitudinal stress uh, increases uh, with the variable HC. Well, uh, 
the transfer stress uh, decreases with the variable EC. Uh, this, uh, uh, this results are in accord with our conceptual analysis. Uh, however, uh, the parametric equations are derived within the uh, slip region. And that is to say, uh, in this figure, uh, the curves beyond the, the boundary section are meaningless. So uh, it is necessary to uh, determine the location of the boundary section, and uh, that is the uh, height of the slip region. Um, based on the existing test results, uh, we found that uh, the variable HC as the peak loss moments uh, tries to be a constant value of 0.4, and knowing that we can take out the effective path of the uh, stress uh, curves, uh, as shown in this figure, an, an approximately uh, linear relationship uh, was found. And uh, uh, from this analysis, uh, the uh, linear uh, simplified equations to predict the uh, tube stresses uh, was, uh, propo uh, were proposed. And uh, this figure shows uh, the distribution of the tube stresses at the peak load moment. Uh, the tube stresses uh, in the uh, slip region are uh, vary in each section uh, linearly along the column height, uh, while they keep constant uh, in the non-slip region. Uh, the height of the slip region to the diameter uh, of uh, the tube ratio is approximately uh, equal to 0.4 to mu. Now, in the distribution of uh, tube stresses, uh, next let's discuss the uh, simplification for the confining stress. Uh, as we know, uh, the confinement effect uh, is determined by the transfer stress. Uh, so, in this analysis of all simplification, uh, the average transfer stress along the column height uh, was adopted to estimate uh, the tube confinement, as shown uh, in. Uh, these figures. And in the calculation, a reduction factor uh, for the transfer stress KH is induced to uh, consider the effect of the column height and the uh, frictional factor uh, between the steel tube and the concrete. Uh, to verify uh, the uh, rationality, uh, um, the proposed equivalent confining stresses uh, were applied to, uh, to four uh, classic confined co concrete stress uh, model. And for all these models, uh, the predicted results uh, were in a good agreement with the test results, which verifies the rationality of the uh, proposed confinement model. Um, based on this study, uh, I would like to uh, give some uh, concluding remarks. Uh, first, uh, the longitudinal stresses of the steel tubes uh, should not be considered since uh, the failure uh, position is uncertain uh, during uh, different uh, kind of loads. Uh, second, to reduce the differences uh, in stress resistance along the column height and to improve the economical benefits, thin walled high stress steel tubes are suggested to be used in uh, concrete field circular tubes. Uh, last, uh, in uh, seismic calculation, the equivalent confinement of the tube in the column plastic hinge uh, should be considered. Uh, lastly, uh, I would like to bring the warm greeting uh, from a uh, China region. Uh, this is uh, a group photo uh, of Astrak E China Young Researchers Conference held last year uh, in uh, Chongqing University. Uh, and the, the China region has about uh, 400 members, and it is administrated by uh, Architectural Design Institute of uh, Shanghai, uh, Tongji, uh, uh, Tongji, yes, here, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, that's all for my presentation, and uh, I sincerely welcome you to come to uh, Chongqing. Uh, that's all. Thank you.